Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you for your time this evening. Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is uh, quite a privilege to chat with you this evening. I'm Mike. Hello. Nice to meet you. Well, first of all, ma'am, tell me how to pronounce your name. Emily Lapisardi. Lapisardi. Uh, yes. Do you, you want me to address you as Emily or Ms. Lapisardi? Emily is fine. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go ahead and just get started. And I have 10 questions for you, about 30 minutes worth, and then I'll let you get on with your weekend. Um, uh, okay. Uh, first of all, um, uh, tell me uh, about your credentials, what you do there. Uh, Miss uh, Miss Lapisardi. So my day job is as the director of musical ac activities at the United States Military Academy at West Point. So I am primarily a professional musician and musicologist, but I have studied Rose Greenhow for oh, over 25 years now. And I have portrayed her in 14 states in Washington, D.C. for National Park Service sites, for the International Spy Museum, for the National Civil War Museum. And I am also the editor of the annotated edition of her 1863 memoir, My Imprisonment. Wow. Wow. You know, I'm really not sure what made me choose her for this assignment. I just did and just kept on digging and digging. And now the quarter's almost over. And uh, I've uncovered a lot of information about her. So it is a indeed a pleasure uh, to chat with you today. So so here are my questions. Here, uh, here they come. Um, first of all, what type of resources do you have available at? Um, uh, I'm assuming it's a museum. No, I work at the United States Military Academy, West Point. It's it's an educational institution for the Army. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right, West Point. Uh, I, I guess I thought you worked at the museum, the spy museum. I have done a number of presentations for them. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything that you can tell us about her that would help us better understand how she conducted her espionage? Well, I think one of the very important things to remember about her is that she was extremely well connected in Washington society before the war. So she knew very well, people on both sides. And in fact, in the presidential election of 1860, the only candidate that she had really no prior connection with was Lincoln. Ah. But even there, William Seward, who became Lincoln's Secretary of State, was a very close friend of hers, had been a frequent guest at her home, and continued to be after the beginning of the Civil War. Okay. So she was placed right in the center of everything that was happening in Washington. And she knew how to encourage people to speak. Uh -huh. I am a federal employee. So part of what I do, we have essentially counter espionage training that we have to do every year. And for me, this is fascinating because I always think about it in terms of my research on Rose. And one of the things that they talk about are people who are just good at getting you to reveal things, getting you to tell your secrets, getting you to confide in them. And that is one of the things that she did extremely well. Now, some scholars will say, that she wasn't a very effective spy because she was arrested fairly early on in yeah, the war. I saw that in my research. But look at what she had already done yeah. at that point. It was highly significant. She continued to be an active agent even after she was arrested. I really think that she believed that her connections would protect her. No doubt. No doubt. Um, my second question, um, do people that you encounter in your travels and in your performances, I guess, for want of a better word, 
uh, in your presentations, do they seem interested in her? Very much so. I find some people who have a little bit of background about her, but relatively few people that I've met realize the breadth of her connections, the fact that she was sent to Europe as a diplomat yeah. after her imprisonment, very likely the first American-born woman to serve as a diplomat abroad. No doubt. No doubt. And in fact, this was, there's no question, this was an official position. Stephen Mallory refers to her in a letter as our ambassadress. Ah, no, I, did, I didn't come across that. Now, I did come across the word socialite all over, all over the place. Yep. Um, and I know she was sent as a diplomat, which unfortunately the trip back, my research kind of revealed that that's where she was killed. Um, yes. So, um, so I guess that was a good thing that she was sent an awful thing that happened, you know, on, on the way back. What can you tell me, Miss Emily, about Greenhow that most people do not know? I think her connection with Seward has really been downplayed in a lot of the more recent research, but in the process of annotating her own writing, what really struck me was how frequently she talked about William Henry Seward, how very bitter she was. She blamed him directly for her imprisonment. She talked about how he had been frequently a guest at her home prior to the war. And in my research, I found some correspondence, not only between Rose and Seward, but also between her eldest daughter and Seward, even after Rose was arrested. Okay. So there was a very close personal connection between those two families. Her daughter married one of Seward's, West, Seward's son's West Point classmates. So the families knew each other well. The letters from Florence to Seward talk about a friendship during the Buchanan administration. And then when Rose went to Europe as a Confederate diplomatic agent, her daughter wrote to the Union Secretary of State and asked for letters of introduction to the U.S. ambassador in Great Britain from Seward. My mother is a spy. You know this. I'm going to visit her. Could I please have letters of introduction? Right. Which is incredibly bold. Very, very. Now, you mentioned her daughter. Uh, I know she had like four kids. Are you, referring to, little, are you referring to Little Rose? No, this is the eldest daughter, Florence. Florence okay. was married at the time of the war. There were actually additional children at at this point, there were only three that were surviving, Florence, Leela, and Little Rose. But there had been two sons as well and several other daughters, including one who had lived into her 20s, who died in 1861. Okay. Okay. Now, now I'm listening to you and being enthralled with what you're saying. I've kind of lost track with where my questions are. Um what uh, what inspired you to begin representing her at events? I had been portraying historical figures from other time periods. Okay. And one of my former teachers was teaching the Civil War to her students. She asked if I would develop two portrayals, one from each side, and present them to her class. So I began looking at all sorts of women from the time period. And Rose Greenhow just stood out to me as being so different from most of them. She okay. was incredibly intelligent, extremely well-read, knowledgeable about politics and history and literature. And yet this is a woman that, as far as we know, had no formal education. Okay. I thought she was absolutely fascinating. 
And in over 25 years of research, what I found has just continued to confirm that opinion for me. Okay. All right. Um, in your opinion, I think this is my fifth question. Like I said, I've kind of lost track. In your opinion, was she, uh, was she unique in her espionage tactics or were there others before her that she learned from? I think she was largely figuring out how to do this herself. She had some guidance from Thomas Jordan. Okay. But at the same time, there was a, a general opinion, at least one sees in contemporary sources, that women were not very effective spies. Okay. And in fact, when she is being questioned by the U.S. Commission for the Trial of State Prisoners, she plays on that idea. And she told them, well, I'm a woman and women to paraphrase, usually can't keep a secret. So what makes you think that I could do this? That's funny. That's funny. Uh, very unique in some of the tactics that she used, hiding messages in her clothes, hiding messages in her daughter's curls. Uh, I've, I've read that. I picked up on all that. Um, how do you, th I think this is question number six. How did she pave the way for future spies? I think through her resourcefulness, really. No, okay. And in some ways, I think perhaps she became sort of a cautionary tale in some ways because she was what we would think of as a consummate political insider. She was moving in the top circles and suddenly people realized that even someone with those sorts of connections might be someone involved in espionage, which to us today seems very logical. Right. But at the time, there weren't a lot of really high profile examples, especially of women who had been in those social circles, had been that well connected and that influential, who became spies. Okay. Now, uh, I, I read about her influence over the Battle of Bull Run. Yes. In your expertise, do you think that the Civil War would have ended differently with or without her? Uh, without her influence, without her her spying, do you think it would have uh, ended better for the Union or with, I don't know, does that make sense? Uh, th does it really matter that she did what she did? Well, I have had in question and answer sessions at some of my presentations, very angry attendees who have said to me that what she did lengthened the war by several years. Ah. I am not sure that that is necessarily true, but we do know that both General Beauregard and President Davis thought yeah. that what she had done was highly significant. Absolutely. So certainly at the time there was a belief that what the intelligence that she had provided had enabled the Confederate victory. Okay. Okay. Actually, that answers uh, uh, my other question. Would things have turned out differently if she had not been a spy? Was she recruited or did she just... I believe I read somewhere where she said that the South runs in my blood. That makes me a rebel or something like that. Was she yes. recruited by Davis or did she just say, I'm going to do my part and I hear secrets and I'm going to, uh, I'm, and you know, I'm going to do this for the South. Well, she was not at all timid about expressing where her sympathies were, which if she had 
been more cautious, she might not have been arrested so early. But she was well known as a Southern sympathizer. And she was recruited by Thomas Jordan. According to her account, he had not yet resigned from the U.S. Army, but he was planning to do so. He was a Virginian. And Governor Letcher of Virginia, who knew Rose socially, had mentioned him to had mentioned Rose to Jordan. Jordan had not previously met her, but he was interested in finding ways to gather information. He was very forward thinking in ways that few people were at that point. So he approached her. She agreed to provide information initially specifically to Jordan and by extension to Virginia rather than to the Confederacy as a whole. Jordan was then assigned to the staff of General PGT Beauregard, which is how Rose and those she recruited came to be working essentially as a spy organization for Beauregard. Okay, okay. Now, did she have others that worked with her? Was it a yeah. ring or was it just yeah. her? There were quite a number of people that were associated to one degree or another, both with her directly and also working through Jordan. When she was arrested, there were a number of other arrests in Washington at the same time of people suspected of being part of her organization. Some of them were, some of them probably weren't, but they ranged from kind of a, a society dentist to government clerks, young women, okay. all sorts of people. So she wasn't alone? No. Okay. But she was, she was very much at the center of the organization in Washington. Okay. Okay. Uh, what can you tell me about her daughter? It, it seems like she kind of disappeared um uh, into a, into history did Little she do, Rose. Uh, yeah did she do anything significant after the death of her mother well she was in france at a convent school when her mother died okay and there is an account from the mother superior at the convent that when they told little rose what had happened that she wept without ceasing for days she had never known her father her mother, she had been with her in her imprisonment. So the relationship was extremely close. Okay. And here she was in a foreign country, and, and now she was an orphan. Her eldest sister, Florence, eventually came and got her and brought her back after the war. She grew up with Florence and Florence's family. And Florence's husband was a career army officer in the United States Army. She married another army officer, presumably somebody that she met through Florence's husband when she was still in her teens. His name was William Penn Duval. And interestingly enough, Duval was a West Point graduate. Wow. So one day I went over to the cemetery and I went to our, our filing system for everyone buried in the West Point Cemetery. And I said, I wonder if he's here. So yeah. I looked under D and not only is William Penn Duval buried in the West Point Cemetery, but they had an infant son who lived of less than a month, also named William Penn Duval. I have never found him mentioned in any of the biographies. Right. He is also buried in the West Point Cemetery. Okay. Okay. Now, I read that uh, where Little Rose is, is buried is like a secret. Oh, it's uh, in France. Okay. Okay. With like some secret garden or something? It's, no. I mean, it's it's a cemetery. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can't believe everything you see on the internet, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Uh, what, I do believe we're about finished. Again, you're awesome. Thank you so much. What is the most important thing about her that you think everyone 
should know. To me, it is the dual nature of what she did. She is known if she is known at all now as a spy, but she was so much more than that. The diplomatic work I think is tremendously important. And all of these things, both the, the espionage work and her work as a diplomat are tied to her ability to connect with people socially. Right. That was her great skill. And that was why she was so dangerous. Because even when they sent her to Europe, she was moving in the highest social circle. She had a private audience with Napoleon III in France. Wow, well, I never read that. Oh, yes. It's, it's in her European diary. And she, she was so accomplished, such a good conversationalist, so good with people that she was able to move in those circles in Europe as well. Okay. So was she a spy because she could do that? Or could she do that because she was a spy? If oh, she'd been sense. doing that most of her adult life. I think... Her connection with Dolly Madison really has a lot to do with it. Okay. Her sister, Ellen, her next eldest sister, married Dolly Madison's nephew. So Rose, in her teens, in her 20s, was exposed to Mrs. Madison. Mrs. Madison was the first real powerful American political woman. Yes. And this ability to use social occasions, to use dinner parties and levies as a means of exercising political influence was very much associated with Dolly Madison. Rose learned it from her, I believe. Uh -huh. And okay. that's why she was so good at it. And that's why she was potentially so dangerous. Okay, okay. Well, I believe I've asked you 10 questions. I have a few more floating around in my head, but that's okay. You're, you're welcome to ask anything else if you'd like. So much for your time, Miss Emily. And uh, thank you for participating in this with me. And uh, I asked around a few different places and somebody told me, you know, I know the perfect person. And then they put me in touch with you. And uh, so I am extremely honored. How can someone get your book? Is it in, on Amazon? It is. It's on Amazon. It's most of the major book retailers, Barnes & Noble, Walmart. There are a few places that carry it as well. I know some of the museum gift shops stock it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. And I hope you have a great weekend and a good rest of this Friday night. Or Saturday night. It's it's been a long week. <laughs> Thank you Thank for your you. time, ma'am. Goodbye. Bye.